Hi, my name is Henry Sagerman. This is Figure 8 Not Compliment. Again, this is joint work with Saul Schleimer and Francois Goethe. So often in knot theory, it's a good idea uh, to look not only at uh, the knot, but also the complement of the knot. So the complement of the knot is what you get when you um, subtract the knot from three-dimensional space. Um, and you're left with a three-dimensional manifold that has uh, a torus boundary. So um, you can think of this as a, I got this sort of ball, and then I've drilled out uh, uh, the knot inside of this, where you can think of a, a worm eating its way through um, this, this uh, object uh, and leaving behind uh, the trail, um, which, is, which is the knot. Um, so one of the most interesting things about the figure eight knot complement is uh, that its complement uh, is actually a hyperbolic manifold. Um, it's one of the um, simplest examples of hyperbolic manifolds. So where did this come from? Uh, so this is closely related to the uh, symmetric figure eight knot. Um, so the symmetric figure eight knot, um, uh, as I said in that video, was designed inside of uh, S3, the uh, unit sphere in four-dimensional space. And then we chose a, uh, uh, a projection point uh, in projecting it via stereographic projection to uh, three-dimensional space so we can print it. Um, so where did we choose this uh, projection point? Well, so uh, w one reason was so that the one reason to choose the point that we did was so that uh, it retained as many of the uh, symmetries of the figure eight knot as we could um, in R three. And so, well, so where is the projection point? Well, it's out at infinity. But one way to think about where it is is in terms of the antipodal point. So the antipodal point on S S three um, to the point which is out at infinity in this projection is right in the middle of, uh, of the knot, sort of equidistant between these, these four um, little bumps here. And so, um, so that projection point is as far away from the knot as possible. Um, there isn't anywhere else you can put it in S3, which does better. Um, and one of the other effects of that is that uh, the, the object that you get after projection is not, not so big. Um, now with the figure eight knot complement, we did sort of the exact opposite. Um, so here the projection point is actually on the knot itself. Um, so we have this tube of constant uh, radius in S3 um, around the knot. And so the knot you know, goes around through here and then comes out of here and goes straight out uh, to infinity in R3. And the tube, which is constant radius um, in S3, gets very, very large radius as you get uh, near infinity. Um, and so it ends up actually curving around being not quite that huge um, as, a, as an object in itself, um, even though sort of as, as you're going around through here, the radius of the tube in R3 is actually infinite because the center of the tube is, is um, infinitely far away. Um, but in any case, you, you get this sort of, it's still pretty bulbous out here um, when you do that. So um, the, the pattern uh, of the, the grid is a little bit different between these two um, examples. This one's sort of got square windows, whereas this one has rectangular windows. And that's really, you know, so you can sort of see inside nicely and see what the, uh, the knot inside looks like. Um, but otherwise, this is uh, pretty much the same parameterization. Um, so this is figure eight knot complement.